All right, uh, three, two, one. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't do the countdown. All right, so I'm not sure if anybody's up this early. It's almost nine, but um, anyways, this video will be on later. So I uh, am at the pipeline blast zone, as you can see, and this land right over here used to be a horse field. Um, and now it's been sold to Penn East, so they own where the pipeline will end and join the existing structure. Um, so, good morning everybody, Carlos. Um, so I've journeyed from the other part of yesterday's um, video that I did. I came from there to here, and this is actually, to put it in metaphorical terms, because I'm no expert, um, and actually Penn East is not really a super big expert either. I found out yesterday that this is their first pipeline they're building. Um, so yeah, they might be subcontracting parts that people have built other pipelines, but they're not only doing things that are with dangerous uh, fluids that they're moving through at high velocity, they are also not necessarily experts doing it. And where we are now, um, right across the street is where it will connect to the existing grid. So fracked gas will enter New Jersey's grid system. So if you live in New Jersey, a small portion of it, I'm guessing, will now be the gas from here and increasingly so as more gas flows. So, and it's not as stable as the gas that we're used to to turn on our ranges and, and our ovens. Um, and to heat our homes. So it's all already more dangerous in that way. But this particular spot over here, this horse, what was a horse field and it was sold to uh, Penn East, this is all, there's going to be a huge facility um, that will be where they transition the gas that came all the way from Pennsylvania into our grid. So it's a particularly dangerous spot. It's called the blast zone for a reason. If this blows up, there will be sort of like a miniature nuclear, I don't know the, the level, but there's houses right over there. Um, Pennington is over there, we're in Hopewell. So these residents are deeply concerned about this and I have one with me who's holding the camera. I wanna have her say a little bit, um, cause she's the expert for a little bit more than me. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you that. All right, just to clarify the blast zone, the blast yeah. zone just doesn't exist in this property where the um, you know where the end station is the blast zone is really any any structure or any and we're passing by schools and oh not we Penn East is going by schools and going by um, uh, you know medical facilities home homes and any place where that pipe goes is can conceivably um, you know if it ruptures at any point that's the so the blast zone really traverses 114 miles of this pipeline, which is coming, um, as Carlos said, from the frack gas and the Marcella shale down here to this end station. Um, one of the really frustrating things about it, too, is because of, you know, arcane laws, um, less populated areas, and we just showed you this horse field, so, you know, it's not a very densely populated area here. Uh, they are, are allowed, Penn East is allowed, and they are planning on, in their plans, to use inferior pipe. Um, they only have to use a low, they can use a lower grade pipe because not as many people will be endangered if it blows. But if they went into a highly densely populated area, they would be required to, you know, use more, uh, use a better quality of pipe. So, I'm not surprised. This yeah. is how these corporations work. That just shows, that shows a whole lot about what we're dealing with. We're dealing with people that only care about profits, really. That's what this is really all about. Um, there is no, the big thing here is there's no need for this gas. There is an oversupply of natural gas in the state of New Jersey, so we are now here kind of living with um, the, uh, the plan of, a, of a, a, group, you know, a conglomerate of natural gas companies that have banded together, formed an LLC in Delaware, of course, because of you know, tax benefits there. It has nothing to do with Delaware. Um, and they are uh, making a play to really control the supply and the um, distribution of this gas so they don't have to pay the middleman it's all about you know they're so determined to get this through because you know that's really what they want to do it's all about it's all about king profit here so
Yeah. And uh, we're doing our best here to try to fight this, and we really appreciate the the work of environmental warriors like Carlos here who are coming around and trying to no problem. trying to uh, <laughs> you know further this story. So. Yeah. And I want to I want to get if we can. And this I, I didn't introduce you. This is uh, Sari, who is a con very very concerned homeowner. There's a home over there, and there's uh, several more. There's a cul-de-sac, and they're all very much in the blast zone. So, um, you know, hopefully people's imaginations can open up and realize that even though this is a field right now and it's very uh, rustic and we hear lots of crickets chirping still and some other wildlife that I don't know what it is, um, there will be a vertical structure here that is where the gas, the fracked gas, will be transitioned, slowed down, modulated, but it's a especially dangerous spot for a variety of reasons. Um, so yeah, I think this is a pretty good summarization of what's going on here. It's not good.